So what do you want to choose? React or Next.js? What are the main differences? Why should I choose React? Why should I choose Next.js? In this simple video, I'm going to just explain to you what is the difference between React and Next.js and why you may choose React over Next.js or the opposite. There are basically not a lot of differences. For one main reason, it's because Next.js is built on top of React. So in the previous course, we created a React application and now we would like to create a Next.js application. So we can take a look at both of them and look at all the arguments to use Next.js. So remember, with React, we can create web application, front-end application, by using this most famous library for web and native user interfaces. And we've been using Vite to create this template. Here, we are not going to use Vite for Next.js. What we are going to use is simply this command down here, npx create next app at latest. So I'm going to come back and next to my uh, React application, just going to enter npx create next app. And if your application uh, actually uh, doesn't recognize that you have uh, the CLI of next, it's going to ask you to install Next.js, which is totally fine. Okay, so I'm going to just use here next app. Okay, I'm going to type enter. And here suddenly we can see that it's totally different from our experience from React. The CLI is asking you some question to configure your Next.js project. So I'm going to type yes to use TypeScript, yes to use ESLint, yes to use Tailwind CSS. So here it's a good example to show you that Next.js is already more than React. It's going to provide you more configuration of your first project. And this is basically here the goal of Next.js. So I'm going to type enter here and we can see that I can use the source folder. I would say yes, because look on React, I also have a source folder. I'm going to type enter and it's going to ask me if I want to use the app router. At this step of the React from zero to euro course, we didn't even take a look at the roots and the router, but Next.js already got in its engine the possibility to create roots for you. So I'm going to type yes. I'm going not going to use the alias. And look at that. So suddenly Node is installing for us React, React DOM, and we already saw React and React DOM inside our React application, but it's also installing Next. And the dev dependencies that are going to be used to develop will be TypeScript, the types for Node, React, React DOM, PostCSS, Tailwind, ESLint, and ESLint config. There we go, we've got our application. So I'm going to take here CD Next app. I'm going to type yarn and yarn dev because I would like to install actually all the packages. I'm going to just to stop that. It's just a reflex for me to always type yarn and yarn dev because I would like to have the, the freshest and the latest packages. Okay, so there we go. We got our application running. And if I come back here on localhost 3000, here, what I have is directly the next application, which is coming by Vercel, the company that is editing uh, Next.js. Okay, I got my Next.js app and I'm going to open it just in here. And there we go. On the left, we have a React application. On the right, we got the Next.js application. And we can already see that there are more files in the Next.js than in the React application. And we can see that we got different files. And if I take a look, because prov previously we've been looking at the architecture of a React project, if I take a look here, we can see here first that we got different file. We don't got the app.gsx and the main.gsx file. We got the layout.gsx and page.gsx. So here we can see already that we are under an app folder and here on the source folder, we got the app.gsx and we don't got this folder. We got the next.config.mgs, which is another config file. And we've got, of course, the Tailwind and PostCSS because I asked for it. 
Okay, and we can already see that we got this next folder up here. Remember, on React, we had to type npm run build to get the this folder for the final application. Here on the next folder, we can see that we got way more files and folder than on the dist of React. So what is Next.js? Next.js, it's basically everything you need to build great products on the web. This is the marketing part <laughs> because it's basically a React under steroids. With Next.js, actually, you have basically the most important thing for me. It's the file directory structure that helps you to create roots. Okay, so you don't need to work with the router and stuff. You don't need to set up the router to get your roots. You can already create your roots here under folders with page.tsx and it's going to basically render a root. Here we can see that we got the root with the function and stuff. Next.js is working with React. So when you write under Next.js, you also write in React. This is why this course exists. Even if you do already some Next.js, you want to use, you want to know how to use React, okay? That's mainly important, that's really important to do some Next.js application. Okay, so what we got also, we got a lot of other features. So we got the dynamic HTML streaming. So here we can see that we can stream our UI from the server with the app router and React suspense. We're gonna come to that later. We use the React server component, so the server, uh, the components uh, rendered on the server. And of course, we got all the basics that are coming, uh, uh, as I said to you, uh, because of the steroids that Next.js is providing. The data fetching, the CSS support, the option to switch between client or server rendering, the root handlers, the server actions, and the middleware. So you got to know something if we use the middleware, it's because Next.js is a backend framework that is rendering uh, uh, applications if you want on the backend or on the client, on the server or on the client, okay? So here, let's go down. We can see also that we got other options. Here we can see that uh, basically Next.js is working with React, but also with TurboPack and Speedy Web Compiler. Okay, these are the tools that have been used to make it run. And what you can do with React is just to go faster. This is the reason why you would like to use Next.js instead of React. Next.js is providing to us all the configuration, everything that you need to go production ready really fast. So there's also a documentation, you can look at it, and it's using the app router, which is a router already pre-configured for you. I already talked about that. I have a full uh, listen on Next.js under uh, my uh, YouTube channel. You can go to check it out. And there's a lot of options here, the authentication, the testing, the deployment and stuff. So basically with Next.js, you go faster than with a basic React application where you would like to do everything by yourself, configure everything by yourself, okay? So I'm gonna close this next app. I'm just going to come back to my React application and I'm going to explain to you quickly why you should learn React to do some Next.js. When you work with a React application like this, you are going to compile some code that at the end will be usable everywhere uh, under a WordPress, under your own application, probably on the server side, as for instance, a Chrome extension, whatever, you can use React everywhere. You're not obliged to create an application with the CLI, you can even use the CDN. React is very, very flexible. However, React, comes almost naked. It just have its own function, its basic functions. For Next.js, it's totally the opposite. Next.js is made to create front-end, back-end application. You can do both. You can do full stack with Next.js. And it has everything configured to go faster to create production-ready applications. Okay? However, you are a bit limited with Next.js, if you want to handle some parts of web development, 
that I would not say not usual, but most of people wouldn't do. Like for the Chrome extension, for, for some other parts, Next.js would not be the best choice. You would prefer to do it in React. I'm going to give a concrete example to end this video. If you would like to create a WordPress plugin with Next.js, it would be probably a bit painful for some elements that I'm not going to mention here. What you would like to do is to stay on a ground level using either Vue.js, either vanilla JavaScript, either jQuery, either React, which is a very good framework for that. Okay, so it's just at the end a question of taste and it's a question of goal of what you really want to do.